Well, good morning, Walnut Village Church. So good to be with you this morning. You know, when I was growing up, my family used to travel every year on Christmas Eve to my grandfather's ranch. It was an eight hour drive. And my mom's job was to distract or entertain or keep the three kids in the back seat quiet and happy if we were awake. This included comical times like listening to old Christmas songs played on the car ra radio. Traveling up the Central Valley of California, you would get some strange stations. Remember the barking dogs? Someone actually recorded and arranged a variety of various dog barks to create the tune of Jingle Bells. But along with comedy and fun, Mom's approach was to have us sing Christmas carols and to build in us knowledge of the Christmas story, and certainly to know uh, the story of baby Jesus and his coming to earth. Not all went as planned for my mom, however, because I would get great joy at singing the wrong words to some of the songs, which was a wonderful torture for my older and way too sophisticated, in my opinion, sisters. Now my favorite was, We Three Kings of Orient Are, tried to smoke a rubber cigar. It was loaded and exploded. Now we are kings no more. You know that alternate, right? That alternate lyric? Seldom if ever sung in church, but often by kids when parents weren't paying attention. But setting aside exploding cigars for a moment, today we're going to look at the story of the wise men, about the gifts, about the responses to the gift God gave us in the Christ child, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. God, as promised, is with us electronically as we gather in his name. And as the wise men did, let us see the light of Christ, experience his presence, the wonder, the amazement that we have at his birth, his coming into our world in human form. And let us, as the wise men did, worship Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, May we join in the song of the universe as expressed by Handel. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. He shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Today, we relight the first three candles of the Advent wreath, the candle of hope, peace, and joy. Now, we light the fourth candle of Advent. This is the candle of love. Jesus demonstrated self-giving love in his ministry as the Good Shepherd. Advent is a time for kindness, thinking of others, and sharing with others. It is a good time to love as God loved us by giving us his most precious gift. As God is love, let us be love also. In the book of Deuteronomy, we find these words. For the Lord your God is God of gods and 
Lord of Lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. From the Gospel of John, we hear, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Pray with me. Teach us to love, O oh Lord. May we always remember to put you first as we follow Christ's footsteps, that we may know your love and show it in our lives. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of Jesus, fill our hearts with love for the world, that all may know your love and the one whom you have sent, your Son, our Savior. Amen. And then join together with us as we pray in unison our prayer for the season of confession and forgiveness. God, we yearn for Christmas past to do the things we normally do at Christmas, to do the things that bring us momentary joy. We feel the weight of isolation and miss the doors opening to us for celebration and warmth the family and friends. We confess that our spirits are lagging, but God, we need you, and we need to be right with you. So overwhelm us with godly grief and remorse for the things we have done, which are not Christ-like. We repent with trembling and broken spirit, and through these tears of repentance, let us remember you give us gifts of hope, gifts of peace through your forgiveness, joy. Now let us see the light of the world, Jesus Christ, as through him we receive mercy and grace, pure joy. Amen. Hear the angels sing, there is hope for everyone to announce our King.
manger floor There is hope for everyone What are you waiting for? There is hope for everyone Come adore There's hope for everyone We are waiting on the promise For the one who lights the dark The scripture reading from Numbers 24, 16 through 17. The message of one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. I see him, but not here and now. I perceive him, but far in the distant future. A star will rise from Jacob. A scepter will emerge from Israel. Isaiah 60, 1 through 6. Arise, Jerusalem. Let your light shine for all to see. For the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth. But the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Look and see, for everyone is coming home. Your sons are coming from distant lands. Your little daughters will be carried home. Your eyes will shine and your heart will thrill with joy. For merchants from around the world will come to you. They will bring you the wealth of many lands and vast caravans of camels will converge on you. Scripture reading is from Matthew 2, 1 to 12. Visitors from the East. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. Now about that time, some wise men from Eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn King of the Jews? King Herod was deeply disturbed 
De uh, King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem and Judah, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star was first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were thrill filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. For God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Pray with me. Heavenly Father and gracious God, thank you for your plan to save this earth, for your Savior, Jesus Christ, for your care and love and watchful eye over each of us. In this time where so many are suffering, we ask that the joy of Christmas would not be lost, but would fall upon them and they would find comfort and hope and joy in your plan of salvation. Amen. Well, in last week's worship service, we talked about needing comfort and joy. And I suggested that in a troubling year, or any year for that matter, the way to comfort and joy might be to focus on Christ the King. And like the angels, the shepherds, and the wise men, go to him, adore him, look to Jesus, rehearse the details surrounding his coming, and leave worry and frustration and fear as something for Jesus to deal with. So today we continue to look at the events and people surrounding his physical entry into our world. Today I want us to consider the wise men, the magi, astrologers from the East. Now sometimes they are mistakenly called kings due to their wealth or perhaps their social esteem or maybe the fact that they could gain immediate audience with King Herod. 
But the Bible does not tell us they were kings, but describes them as wise men, which in ancient Greek is magi, which translates into, yes, of course, wise men. Our word magic actually comes from magi. Now these visitors from the east were astronomers, men of great learning. And in their day, astronomy, astrology, science, it was all amalgamated into one area of learning. So their study would have included watching the sky and patterns of the stars. A bright star as which led them would not go unnoticed. More than likely, the wise men were very rich as evidenced by the ease by which they could travel and the amount of time that they could devote to studies. Now the wise men, being from the east as referenced by Matthew, is probably the area now known as either modern day Turkey, excuse me, modern day Iraq or Iran, Saudi Arabia or Yemen. And being from the east, they would have been among Jews who were exiled from Judah and Israel centuries before. Now no doubt, while in exile, the Jews mixed with peoples of the area, and these Eastern Magi, philosophers, astrologers, or whatever you want to call them, would have become familiar with or perhaps even adopted the Jewish faith. These men knew the promises of the Messiah and were now probably, like other believing Jews, waiting for the consolation of Israel. Their identification as kings, both in tradition and in later Christian writings, probably is linked to scripture, Old Testament scripture. We read in Isaiah 60 this, kings coming to the brightness of dawn, bearing gold and frankincense. And in Psalm 72, we read, may all kings fall down before him. So in all likelihood, that is where the wise men in our Christian traditions became kings. Now, Matthew does not tell us there were three wise men. This idea, as most of you know, is probably because Matthew mentions the three gifts that they came. And centuries old tradition tells us that gold speaks of royalty, incense speaks of divinity, and myrrh speaks of death. It is almost certain that these magi brought the gifts unaware of this. They simply wanted to honor the king of the Jews and traditionally, the custom was to bring valuable gifts when visiting a dignitary. The gifts they brought were used in commerce and could easily be the resources that they needed to fund the family's later and necessary escape to Egypt from King Herod. The first that we see the star is when the scripture tells us they saw the star rising and then are led by it when they leave Jerusalem where no one could give them any direction. We are told that the star went ahead of them, guided them to Bethlehem and stopped over the place where Christ was. Now this would indicate that this was a very unusual star and it first got their attention because of its movement, but it is something very different, something not typical of a star which are normally stationary. This may have been more a bright light that moved, similar to the pillar of fire that led the Israelites from Egypt to Canaan. There are many different suggestions for the natural origin of this remarkable star. Some say it was the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, some other planetary conjunctions. Still others suggest a supernova. And some think of comets or specifically created unique stars as a sign. But whatever it was, this was obviously miraculous, a supernatural phenomenon. Some scholars say that this star, which literally stood over the head of the child, as some tra translations of Matthew tell us, was some kind of meteor that guided the wise men to the very house where Jesus was. That this idea of a star-like shine associated with the head of Jesus is what gave rise to the idea of seeing a halo over Jesus in ancient and medieval religious art. But the bright light may in fact have been in and upon Jesus and shined outward through the baby even brighter than starlight. It was reflecting the bright light of God emanating from within and all about the baby Jesus. And this is what led the wise men. Maybe bright star was the best description that Matthew could use to describe this miraculous light. 
Now, it is interesting as we continue to note that the wise men, even with all their knowledge, their study, their stargazing, took a wrong course in a sense. They went to Jerusalem to ask for direction. They did not go directly to Bethlehem. And what good did it do them? It actually put them and Jesus in danger from Herod. The wise men came first to Jerusalem, assuming that the leaders of the Jews would be aware and excited about the birth of their Messiah. But sadly, the wise men were wrong, and they found a simply different case. The religious leaders knew of the prophecies, had no interest or curiosity or zeal to pursue what had been predicted from old. Sadly, this is pretty typical, right? On the one hand, we have the shepherds, men without education or training, and they are ones given the good news, told about Jesus, and these shepherds did not miss their way. They came to Christ at once. The wise men, even with a star to guide them, missed their way and went to Jerusalem instead of to Bethlehem and inquired at the palace of Herod instead of the stable where the Christ child was born. How ironic. These wise men would have been better just to go to the fields and inquire of the lowly shepherds to gain the information that they were after. How typical is that of so many? Truth, the promise of great good, is right in front of their noses, and questions, delay, and other pursuits take them on a circuitous route to the truth and life that they seek. Well, something else about the wise men is part of our Christmas celebration, we have gift giving. The wise men gave gifts, but more important than these gifts is the fact that they worshiped Jesus. How strange it must have been to an observer to see these impressive dignitaries in a simple dwelling, bowing before a young child, in worship and awe of whose presence they were in. There are many different responses that people have to Jesus. Some the responses of the wise men, some the responses of the shepherds, some responses like the ones of those gathered around observing this story. But not all recognize Jesus as God. The wise men did not miss that fact and appropriately humbled themselves in the presence of great personage, a true king. Three times in our wise men's story, in verses 2, 8, and 11, we read the word worship. The wise men could not have known that they would model for centuries going forward the right response for all of us when we meet Jesus, God's Messiah. The wise men sought out Jesus and worshiped him, even at great personal cost. In addition to the wise men, we see how others in the story respond to Jesus. The puppet king, Herod, he displayed an open hatred and hostility toward Jesus. Some respond as Herod did. The chief priests and the scribes, they were indifferent toward Jesus, all the while retaining their religious respectability. They had knowledge of him, but would not yield, not bend a knee to Jesus. Some respond as the priests and scribes did. Now God orchestrates our history, and here in our Christmas story, God, as he always does, when interacting with us as humans, he follows a perfect plan, even though it is filled with surprising detail. In comparing the visit of the wise men to the earlier visit of the, she of the shepherds, we see their story found in the Gospel of Luke, and there are some things that are significant about both stories. Jesus came to the Jews first, then the Gentiles. God keeps promises, and here he kept his promise to the chosen people, Israel. But too, in this story, through Jesus, the Gentiles, all peoples in fact, become chosen of God and are given the opportunity of eternal salvation. Now Jesus first came to the poor, the humble, the uneducated, and then next he came to the rich, the honored, and the learned. Jesus lifts up the poor in spirit, or the humble. Sometimes position, knowledge, and pride derail people from seeking and accepting Jesus and his great love. But in this story, the wise men saw who Jesus was and worshiped him. And we see both humble and elevated alike receiving Jesus. In this really brief look at the events surrounding the coming of the wise men, there are several other things that we can learn from them. 
They were not satisfied with just looking at the star and admiring it. They took action. They did something. They got up and they followed the star and set out to see where it would lead them. With determination, they persevered in their search. And in following after the star, they came upon what they sought. They did not get distracted by clergy or doubtful religious leaders. They did not let them lead them astray in their search for Jesus. They rejoiced at the star that they were finding and grateful for the guidance the star gave. When they arrived at the destination the star had led them to, there was no hesitation. They burst through the doors and did not hold back in their adulation for the Christ King. When they entered in, they worshiped. They sensed an urgency to worship him now and not delay, not to wait until later or when it was more appropriate. In his presence, they worshiped. When they worshiped, it was to give something, not empty words, but humble, yielding hearts in true adoration. So from this account of the wise men, there is a wonderful pattern that's established, and it goes like this. Those who sincerely look for Jesus will see him. Those who truly see him will worship him. Those who worship him will give all that they have and all that they are to find him. Let us be the wise men in our 2020 Christmas story. Amen. Let us pray together that prayer that our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we saw that the wise men came and they bowed low and they worshiped. And they could not have had the worship that we have, the privilege that we have by taking the sacraments. 
We take the Lord's Supper as a form of worship and adulation of Jesus Christ, our Savior. So hear the words of remembrance that come from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So if you have bread and cup available, take the bread and eat it now and worship as the music plays. And in the same way, Jesus said, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and you, sealed by the shedding of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as oft as you drink it. Take the cup and drink it now. over this Christmas time, remember these words. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes again. And so our Christmas time is a time of joy, a time of celebration, a time of wonder, but it is that time where we anticipate the great sacrifice that Jesus makes for us. Well, here are closing then for today. Are you willing to stoop down and consider the needs and desires of little children? Will you remember the weaknesses and loneliness of people who are growing old? Will you stop asking how much your friends love you and ask yourself if you love them enough? To bear in mind the things that other people have to bear. To trim your lamp so that it will give more light and less smoke. And to carry it in front of you so that your shadow will fall behind you. To make a grave for your ugly thoughts and a garden for your kindly feelings with the gate wide open. Are you willing to do these things for a day? Then you are ready to keep Christmas. May the truth of this wisdom penetrate your souls so that we keep Christmas in truth and love. Amen. Thank you.